Oh, I don't know what it is. Why would I not be surprised if that was the correct answer? It's probably is. So let's recall from last time. Um, uh, all the commitment one. Uh, R satisfies the ascending chain condition on ideals. This is uh, more general than uh, uh, the what I described in the homework uh, with the ascending chain on the principle is with the ascending chain on all ideals, it stabilizes. Uh, two, all ideals of R. Are finitely generated. By the way, you should show uh, just for fun for yourself or whatever, show the equivalence of these two. It's not difficult uh, that the ascending chain condition is equivalent to I just being finitely generated. The interesting part is three all prime ideals of R are finitely generated. So I'm going to go through this because it's just it's kind of fun and it'll probably be useful with one problems I'll give you on the next assignment uh, when that rolls up. So let me state this kind of in theorem form, if you will. Well, what is that all right? So, there is if and only if every prime ideal is fine. And for the purposes of writing up this proof, I am going to take the definition of uh, the theory and to be this easy on myself. So the proof if every ideal is uh, finite generated, then certainly if your prime ideal is. Of course, that's not the interesting part of the theorem. The interesting part of the theorem is why well, are prime ideals good enough? All you got to know is the prime ideals are prime ideals generated, and you got got them all. all right, so let's explore that a little bit. Uh, first thing I, um, I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is, I mean, you see, if you need to you see this on almost every proof where it's something about prime ideals. The first thing, because Actually, I consider this kind of a, a good way to think about things. If you ever have a property, so some property about your ideals with the ring or whatever, and this property ha uh, and this property has the property that um, first of all, there's something that's maximal with respect to that property, and anything that's maximal with respect to that property is prime, then you probably got a good property. And this is what happens to the property of finite degeneration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to claim if I and R uh, is not finite degenerated. So that is to say there exists some ideal that's not finite degenerated. Then there exists an ideal maximum. Uh, with respect to uh, not being finite generated. Okay. 
So if there's some ideal floating around there that's not finite regenerated, you can find an ideal that is as big as possible with respect to that property. It's maximal with respect to finite regenerated. And of course, what that means is it's not finite regenerated, but any ideal that properly contains it must be finite regenerated. This really smells like Zorn to me. So, but, uh, Gamma be the set of uh, J uh, such that J is an ideal, J contains I, and J is not finite generated. So let's collect all these rings, or I'm sorry, all these ideals. That are not finite regenerators. Uh, this is, as always seems to be the case, this is better day. <laughs> Somebody bring me a pair of scissors to next class. <laughs> um, so, um, the first thing I claim is uh, uh, this is uh, this set has a maximal element. So uh, gamma is not the empty set because, in fact, I itself is in here and it is assumed to be not finitely generated. Uh, gamma is partially ordered, it's a partially ordered set, post set. Sometimes I'll use that for creation uh, under set theoretic. And so to apply Zorn's lemma, we need to show that every chain has an upper bound. So let's see. The chain and gamma. Uh, So remember this is just a totally worked subset. Um, this is the same as we've been doing all along. Oh, I need to construct an upper bound for this chain. So I'm gonna let you be the unit <laughs> of all these I alphas in the chain. Uh, U is an ideal as C is K, because we've gone over this before, but if you have two elements, A and B and U, then A is in some I alpha, B is in some I beta. Let's say that I beta contains I alpha, that means A and B are both in the I beta, so there's sum is, and so sum's in U. This depends heavily on the chain. Uh, you certainly contain um, I, right? Um, well, let's see, I alpha. Um, actually, it contains both of them. So it contains every I alpha, it contains I itself, right? And so it's since it contains every I alpha, that makes it an upper bound. The only thing left is we need to verify that this is in. Gamma. We've already shown that it's what an ideal. Well, we argued that it's an ideal. Uh, it certainly contains I. The only missing piece is it's not finally generated. And, and any ideas on how we might do that? How, how can we show that U is uh, not finitely generated? If it was finitely generated, uh, you could take the generator that's in the chain that's for the, the, the ideal that's furthest along mm -hmm. in the chain, 
and uh, show that that's actually equal to um, the ideal that contains it in the chain. Let's show that u is equal to the ideal. Right. Uh, everybody get that? Scribble down a couple of things. So suppose u is equal to x1, x2, xt. Suppose the final can generate it. Let's say that each xi is in i some alpha i. Uh, without loss of generality, I alpha T contains um, one of these ideals. There's one corresponding to each one you can generate. One of them is the biggest in a certain sense, right? So suppose it's the one at the end. This contains all the others. So, x1, x2, xt is in t. But since the i, since This generates U, which ostensibly contains this. So in particular, this is a generating set for I alpha T, right? Uh, therefore, I alpha T is finite to generate, which is the contradiction. So our first claim is established because since we've shown that an arbitrary chain has an upper bound, um, as a maximum, we call this P. So we'll let P be an ideal. Maximal with respect to being finite. Now, our next move in this little chess game is we've got this P that's as big as possible with respect to being finite generated. Everything that properly contains it uh, must be finite generated. We need to now show that this P is prime. Not finite generated. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that's certainly what I meant to say. Yes, P is as big as possible with respect to not being finite generated. Anything properly contains it must be finite. We're going to show that P is um, is prime. Uh, so um, um, yes. So. I think maybe it's sort of implied, but in our definition of gamma, are we are we wanting J to be a proper ideal? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because in fact, if it's not, it's generated by the element one. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do kind of a usual starting point here. I want to show that this thing's a prime ideal, but I suppose. A and suppose you have A, B, and P with neither A nor B. And B. All right, so you've got a few things that are not the ideal uh, coming together to be in the ideal. Um, now, I think this will be helpful uh, for like the next homework here. Uh, I want to define a particular ideal here. Um, uh, 
But A, I want A to be the collection of all X and R. Um, Such that X, A, S, and P. Uh, something else this is called. This is the set of everything in the ring that throws the element A into back into P. Now let me let me make some observations about this. Um, First of all, this is an item. And R X A is also in the therefore R X. This is an idea, right? Because it's closed under differences and multiplication. It's also a prop. Why is it prop? So That's right. If it weren't proper, it would have to contain one, which would mean one times A is a P, and we've assumed that that's not the case, right? So this is a proper ideal. Um, now, let me also make another observation. Certainly, P is contained in that. Now, certainly, if X is in P, then multiplied by A is P, right? But there's more, or potentially. Anybody see something else that's in uh, that's in A but not in B? B. Right, because B times A, we're assuming in B. So, in particular, if you look at PB, um, this is contained in A. So, in particular, this properly contains P because we're assuming that B is not in P either. So, this is actually truly larger. Or does that say that A? Right. Since uh, A is fine to generate. Okay. Now, um, I'm just about done this thing, I think. I'm going to make the following claim, and my claim is this. We now claim uh, So I'm going to make all a claim. With uh, AI, some elements of <laughs> yeah. 
So in other words, so here, here's essentially what my claim is. I claim that we can now show that P is generated by some finite list of elements in P that I have to pick sequentially and the ideal A out. But A is finitely generated, right? So this has got some finite list of generators. Let's say it's generated by Y1 up to Yt. Then A, little a, is generated by Y1a up to Yta, right? So this is, you might consider this an abbreviated form of the gener of this finite generators for A times little a, okay? So this is uh, all we need. This claim, finish it off. Because it will show that P is finitely generated, which contradicts the fact that it is, was in fact an ideal that is not. Uh, so, Let's let P be in uh, P. Um, which is contained in PA. Now, uh, let me point out that PA, in fact, maybe I should do a strict statement here. Uh, So notice PA uh, strictly contains B, right? So that means that this one's also fine, right? So let me write down the generators. It can easily be shown that, you know, you, you might say, well, Jim, how do you know you can just pick this A here? Uh, it's an easy computation to show that you, you can pick it this way with each alpha i in the peak. In fact, maybe I should probably I should convince that. You might be skeptical that you can do this. So let me take a little aside here. We do know the PA is finite generator, right? So PA can certainly be generated by P1 plus R1A, P2 plus R2A, uh, PK plus RKA. Right, I should put brown brackets here. Everybody remember that? I can see the generate the product list. Uh, never hurts to throw in another generator, it's still finite. And now that I've done this, this allows me to take these off because if I have P1 and I have A, then I've got this. If I've got P2 and I've got A, then I've got this and so forth. So this is P1 up to PK A. And so that's why, that's how I know that I can pick it in a special form. Okay. Uh, so notice that uh, my arbitrary P and P being in this thing, I can write P as R1 P of alpha 1 plus R2 alpha 2 plus R in alpha N plus some R A. Right. So what does this mean? Well, let me point out that this is in P, right? And so are all these. Right? So R A is in P. 
And what does that mean about R? <laughs> Hence, R is in right definition. Therefore, what we've shown is P is contained in uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha N, A. And the other containment should be obvious, I think, because every one of these is in P. And by construction, when I multiply something in A times something in capital A, it's in P. So we get P as alpha 1, alpha N, and that equals. Okay, any questions? So this was, this is the proof that if every prime ideal is finitely generated, then every ideal is finitely generated. Yeah, that's right. So where did we use the assumption that every prime ideal is finitely generated? Uh, let's see, if I lost all the way here. Like, uh, I mean, the proof of P was prime. Um, oh, so 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 what? We'll, yeah. So the structure of this is as follows. What we showed is uh, if you have an ideal that is not finitely generated, then what we've shown is there must be an ideal that is maximal with respect to that property, right? And this shows this contradiction shows that an ideal that is maximal with respect to this property must also be finite with O, but can't be finite with generator. Right? Oh, it has to be prime. Sorry. Right. So what we've shown, so so let me let me kind of let me kind of answer that question and summarize it here. So number one, if R has an ideal that is not Finitely generated, then there exists an ideal that is max with respect to not being finitely generated. Step one. Step two, we showed. Uh, such a an ideal that is max with respect to not finally generated is prime. Like that's that's essentially what okay. So here's how we do it. So if there exists I not finally generated, then there exists prime not finally generated. Right. So if there is any ideal that's not finally generated, there must be a prime ideal that's not finally generated. And the common positive is if all ideal, if all prime ideals are finally generated, then all ideals must be finally generated. So does that slide the piece of puzzle in there? Okay. Um, uh, here is a here's something I I'm gonna leave as an exercise, and then I'm gonna go to play some next day and probably <laughs> see that. So. Um, Um, oh, if yeah, Is a chain of primes.
So suppose I walk up to you on the street and I give you some chain of primes out of some community room uh, one. Then, the intersection, and two, the union of primes. This is a good exercise, to, uh, it, it's not difficult uh, to show. Um, of course, the intersection of any collection of ideals is an ideal. The interesting part of that is prime ideals. The second one's more interesting because usually you don't expect unions of ideals to be ideals, but of course, since it's a chain, this is when we beat this dead horse quite a bit, you know, in our other proofs. Uh, but these are actually both prime ideals. Let's see if you can verify that. Um, and here's another one that I'm going to leave as an exercise. Uh, but I'd be an ideal in R. And P a prime ideal containing an I. Now let me point out that of course we know that there is one because any ideal is contained in a maximal ideal. So there's at least one prime ideal that contains this. But the point of this is we can shrink. Uh, P to a prime ideal minimal among all prime ideals containing I. Minimal uh, among all prime ideals containing I. This is the this is actually kind of a, an important theorem because what what it says is uh, among the other things it says is if you have an ideal I, then it is contained in a what's often called minimal prime. Uh, that is to say, there's some smallest prime in a certain sense that contains it. Now, um, don't. Let this terminology fully the minimal prime need, need not be unique. There might be many minimal primes that are not comparable. So, for example, um, let's let uh, Um, so principal ideal here by 420. See, uh, there's a four of them, right. Uh, and none of them are comparable, but they're all minimal primes all of that. Uh, as you might guess, this is instrumental in this. Okay. So uh, here is, um, a lot of people refer to this as sort of Clancy's next neighbor uh, property. And this is kind of uh, this is kind of cool. 
Um, Okay, so suppose you're living in some rainy, it's not too proud to be here, and you find a kid who takes pain. Then there is a problem. One strictly contained in the human one, uh, such that With no prime ideal problem. So, in other words, it's almost like thinking about things sort of topologically, like an animal. So, you've got Big prime Q and maybe smaller prime P what you can do is you can grow this up the bigger prime P1 and you shrink this one down to a smaller prime Q1, such that Q1 contains P1, and there's no other prime in the no personal land. It's done, right? Um, so uh, this depends on kind of previous results, which are easier to prove, uh, but this is kind of fun. Um, first, We make the claim there exists a maximal uh, there is a maximal chain of primes. What do I mean by maximal chain? What I mean is. Say, let's call this A alpha. And I'll assume that I include P and Q in this with So there's a chain of primes. So what do I mean by a maximum chain? Well, actually, maybe you should tell me, right? I, what, what, what should I mean by this? So it's a chain of primes that's in between there, right? So it's like a little accordion, all these little primes in there. Um, what do I mean by, what are you supposed to mean by maximum now? What, what, what do you see proper way to think about this? Or any two primes in that chain, any prime contained in one containing the other is also in that chain. I, I think you might be on. So, so run that run me again. All right, so any two primes in the chain, uh, any prime that contains one and is contained in the other is also contained in that chain, but also there might be some posts that would be complicated. So, to work out straight. 
Okay, I, I think I, I think I might be able to catch your idea a little bit more briefly, perhaps. Um, if uh, there exists a prime ID on B, uh, such that B and B is comparable to all uh, A alpha, then B is in the chain. That's what I mean by mass. Any other prime idea you can find in the room is comfortable, but everything in this chain is already there. Uh, maybe we won't go through all the details, but I mean, so <laughs> how would you uh, how would you show that a maximal chain exists? I mean, this seems like not an unreasonable thing, but there is an axiom of choice thing going on here, right? So we've got to zone about it somehow. But can it be the collection of all chains? Right. But gamma be the collection of all uh, chains um, A alpha. Any alpha uh, such that uh, so this is just a collection of all possible chains of primes through P and P, right? Okay, almost every time, the first thing I do is I try to convince myself that alpha is not the empty set. Why is it not the empty set this time? That's right. You've got the silly chain PQ is in gap. But it's probably not a maximal chain. All right. Now select a chain down. Yes, it's partially. I mean, how does this work? Uh, right, how do we do that? That's a great question. So if you want to change the consent of other, if, uh, if each um, element of one chain is one of the other. That's right. That's right. Uh, we say, um, well, um, Chain. Let me go back or, or we say A alpha, this chain is less than or equal to A alpha prime if each A alpha is in so it's too low. This makes uh, it's so sad. Now take a chain of these. So you might think of 
a chain of these looks like sort of denser and denser. And again, any two of them are comparable. If you take if you take uh, two of these chains of primes out of there, one of them is contained in the other. Right. The union of this, so if you take the union of this chain, it's still a chain of primes, right? Everybody agree with that? Uh, it's probably easier to see that uh, that's maximal element. It's certainly maximum element because it's a union over all the chains and it has to contain all the other prime ideals. Uh, and again, it contains PQ and it's a, a chain. So this is why you can extract uh, a maximal chain, right? So there is, and sometimes people call this a saturated chain, chain of primes as well. Um, so, um, so now that we've gotten our maximal chain of primes, let's do this. We have a maximal of chain of primes. <laughs> A alpha between B and Q. And again, I'll assume P and Q are in that chain too, just for convenience. Now choose X. Choose your favorite X that lives in the big prime, but not the small one. Uh, and let P1. The, the union of all primes will chain that do not contain X. Um, what do you suppose I'm going to make Q1? So I've grown P1 to be the union of every prime ideal in this chain that doesn't contain my X that I've picked. What do you suppose I'm going to, how, how do you suppose I'm going to build Q, Q1? The union of all primes that contain X. You don't mean the unions. Oh, of course, no, there you go. Let uh, Q1 uh, be intersection. Of all primes. Now, since this is a chain, we know from a previous result that that intersection of primes in the chain is a prime. So Q1 is an honest to goodness prime, and P1 is a union of uh, prime ideals in a chain that don't contain X. And I know for a fact that uh, P1 is prime. So we now have P inside P1 strictly contain Q1 and Q. We know that P1 and Q1 are primes by our previous, and certainly the containment in the middle must be strict because Q1 uh, contains X and P1 does not. Right? So the only thing left um, is if there is this a prime ideal A such that anybody tell me oops Q1. Anybody tell me what the problem with that is? Contradict the maximality of the chain. A. Then the maximality of chain. And that wraps it up. Okay. Any questions? All right. Well, this is a good place to break.
Um, I hope you all have, uh, well, I hope to see you in the math club get uh, time, but other than that, I hope you all have a great Labor Day, and we'll see you on Wednesday.